Hello there, I'm Eric Frano, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be looking at some of the updates to Photoshop CC from January 2014. Not the big ones, but some of those that may help your workflow. Let's jump in and see what's new. Okay, I'm here in Bridge. Let's double click and open up this image from Scarborough. And there's a few things new in Adobe Camera Raw, but first of all, let's go over to my tab here, the lens correction, and just enable lens profile correction there, because that's really winding me up. Okay, let's go back to my basic tab, and let's start at looking at what's new. Well, first of all, these sliders. We've always had an auto here that's done a, well, quite awful job, but they've been a starting point. Let's go back to defaults here, now, if I hold down shift and I double click on one of these pointers here, shift and double click, you'll see that it alters it and it auto corrects what it thinks each individual one should be. If I come up to the highlights here, it's probably going to drop this one down. Nope. Contrast a little bit. There we go. So that's what it's thinking I should do for each of the sliders. And of course, I can choose each slider individually. Let's bring up the clarity just a little bit on this one. Now, there's something else new here as well. If I go up to the leveler here, and you'll see that it says the straighten tool, double click to straighten automatically, and that's new. So let's double click, and sure enough, it gives me a new crop. It doesn't actually crop it, doesn't straighten it. It says, this is what I think is straight. Now I can just press enter, and there we go. It's now straight, and it looks pretty straight to me. That building at the top there looks pretty straight. Now, the, how does this compare to what was new a little while ago? Remember, over here in our lens correction, in the manual tab, we had these upright icons. So surely then, this is going to be the same as the auto. Well, no. Let's click on that and see the difference. There we go. That's the auto. And actually, in this case, it looks better. What's this doing is it's looking at overall perspective. Whereas the straighten tool just looks for angles that it can make straight and picks one and does it so a big difference here now this will now override our straighten at the top here on our straighten tool double click it and it should give us another crop there we go come off of that first of all and then double click and it'll give us a new crop so two different ways of doing things let's have a look at the difference just one more time let's click on that one and i actually prefer this one. I don't know about you, but I do. All right, let's open the image and go into Photoshop proper. Here we go. And let's have a look at some of the new things that we can do in Photoshop. Well, first of all, let's go over to our color sampler tool here. You'll find it just there. And if I click around, if you're used to using the color sampler before, you'll know that four has always been our maximum. Not anymore. We can go all the way up. I'm just clicking randomly, by the way, to 10 now, which is very helpful. And there's a button at the top now that says clear all rather than clear. Makes it a bit clearer, I suppose. There we go. We're all clear. Back to square one. That's quite helpful. OK, I'm going to close down this image. Don't save that and go to my move tool. And what I want to do is go to file and new. And there's something new here as well. In the background contents there, you can see that I'm currently set to white and there's a color swatch next to it. I can now click on the color swatch and choose my color. In my case, let's go for a nice dark blue. Click OK. There it is, all ready to go. Let's click OK. We've now got our own background color. Now for a new feature that makes me very, very happy indeed. And yet it is so, so simple. That background layer that we've just created there is currently locked. I can now bring my mouse over to it and click on the lock and it is now unlocked just with a single click. All right, we'd better rename this one to uh, dark blue. And while we're here, I can tell you that now you can have up to 255 characters in the name of your layers, which is uh, an improvement on previous editions. Now let's go over to text and I'm going to just very quickly type font here. 
I've been told that there are improvements to font scaling now. Uh, I don't know how to prove that to be honest with you, but uh, they are there. One thing that has changed with fonts that I can show you is history states. This is going to help a lot of people, I'm sure. If I bring up the character palette here and then I bring over open the history that I've got open, you'll be able to see that I can now change the size of the font and it's registered in my history states. In fact, that's true for all my sliders here. I do like that very, very much. And of course, that does mean that I can then go back later on. Let's change this to a, a yellow, perhaps. Here we go. So I can now press Control, Alt and Z, or Command, Alt and Z if you're on a Mac, and I can step backwards through my different states of my font. Incredibly helpful. I do like that one. Let's go back to my layers. Now then, I can now come over to my swatches and you'll see that there's a new row that appears at the top of the swatches. And these are recent colors. So now if I go and choose a new color, let's pick a something a bit different. Let's go for a, a sort of a greeny, light greeny. I click OK. You'll see that then that's added to those swatches. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. It's in there in the fly out menu, show recent colors there. If you don't like it, I think it's quite handy though. Okay, one last little thing. Let's turn off that font layer. And I'm gonna go and create a shape here of this rabbit. Let's create that out. There we go. Here's my rabbit. A nice green rabbit, as it turns out. Now let's go and change over to my move tool. And now I'm gonna to change to the white arrow tool. What's really helpful here is you can see that the anchor points are now all in black. If I click down in the middle, they all become white. Now this also is the case if I'm not have them selected at all. I can just click on the shape and sure enough, there's all my anchor points. I can see them very clearly and I can go and adjust them. Let's make my rabbit into a hair. So there we go. Some of my favorite new features that maybe aren't hitting the headlines but are going to help my workflow. I'm Eric Renault. This has been a video for tipsquirrel.com. I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.